All right, so what I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to show you a basic uh, site template that you can uh, build, and then from that template, you can we can move into building more complex things like WordPress themes and plugins and things like that. Um, and this is one of the things that I recommend that you do, like one of the very first things, is to create templates for each one of the different kinds of projects you might work on. So, uh, for example, I have a different template for static. Uh, pages versus uh, WordPress themes versus WordPress plugins. I have different templates that I start off with and what this allows you to do is well, you, you'll find that you have a lot of the same code that you start off with when you're writing each one of these things so it just keeps you from rewriting a bunch of code that you're going to use over and over and over again so it just saves you some time, saves you some energy um, and something I didn't do at first <laughs> that uh, when I did start doing actually r r made quite a bit of difference so it's one of the things that first things that you should probably do and, and I'm going to show you a basic HTML template to start off and then once we've done that we can use that knowledge to build a theme template that you can start off with and then from that we can uh, you know start to build uh, plug-in templates uh, that you can start off with that will help you with that as well so um, start off slow, get into some more advanced stuff as we go. So the first thing I've done is I've just created a folder. I'm just calling it template. Uh, this is where we're going to save all our files. So you can go ahead and create a folder like that. Just save it to your desktop. Um, the second thing that uh, I would suggest is to uh, go ahead and get this program called Notepad++. Um, it makes it really, really easy uh, to write code. Um, it does a lot of number of things that I'll show you as we go that make it much easier. Uh, it's designed specifically for writing code. It's a free program. You just Google Notepad++. You can download it. It'll take you probably about five minutes to install. So um, I highly suggest that program. It's where I write all uh, of the code that I do. So what I have here is I have a number of pages that I've kind of already written some code for. And I'm just going to walk you through these. Uh, step by step and show you uh, how they're created. Um, anybody who's done any kind of design before, uh, right off the bat, looking at this may say, may see that I don't have everything in here. Um, and really what I'm doing is I'm keeping some of the more complicated stuff out for right now um, so that uh, I can just show you kind of the nuts and bolts and not over complicate things too fast. So yeah there's not everything in here but this is going to give you an idea of the nuts and bolts of how this all comes together and then we can add some of the the more complex stuff as we go so um, so yeah the easiest thing to do is just dive right in so I'm just going to do that um, first off I suggest you create uh, these, fi these files right here and so there's header.php, footer.php, sidebar, style.css, index.php, and single.php okay and so the header is just going to be uh, our header for the site. Footer is going to be the footer. Sidebar will be the sidebar. Our index will be our home page. Single will be like a single website page. And then our style will be the CSS uh, style sheet that uh, does all the styling for, for the uh, template. So um, go ahead and create those files to start off with. And then I'll, we'll start to walk through what code um, goes into those. Okay, so assuming that you've created those files, uh, we'll just start off with the header. And first thing you'll notice that's in here is an HTML tag. And you might be wondering, well, why do you put an HTML tag in PHP? And the reason is, is that all the PHP designation does in this case is really tell the server to process any PHP that might be in this file first and then output it at output uh, it as HTML along with the rest of this HTML. So you could actually create um, an entire pa an, uh, page that has only HTML in it and save it as header.php or whatever.php and it would still show up just like a regular HTML page. Um, so all the, all the PHP designation does again is tell it to process any PHP that might be in this file and then output everything. So uh, we're still going to use HTML markup uh, which for some of you who've used HTML before, that might be a relief. Um, when we get into writing like scripts and plugins and things like that, then you'll be writing PHP files that are pure P, 
uh, PHP and don't have any HTML or have very little HTML in them. So uh, PHP is very versatile in, in the way you can use it. So anyway, we start off with our HTML tag, and all that really does is tell uh, the browser that this file is HTML, and that's how it should be processed. Um, then we have our head tag, or head section, which is uh, essentially any scripts or links or anything like that that would go in here. Um, uh, and this content is, is, is hidden. It doesn't actually show up on the browser. Um, it's just stuff that you put up there that then you can use uh, down in your body down here to help things display. So you might put like JavaScript up here. Uh, you might put PHP, some PHP includes or, or different things of that nature up here. You can put all kinds of things up in your head. And actually one thing that we need to put up in here is a link to our style sheet. And that looks like this. explain all this here in just a second. Oof. Okay, so what this is saying is that this is a link. Um, the relationship is that it's a, it's a style sheet. That's what we're linking to. This is the uh, um, hyperlink reference, which is our style.css file, which is right here. Um, Type is its text slash CSS and media equals screen. So, um, and then we, you'll notice here if you've done HTML before, most of the times um, you would close it like this, right? That's HTML. But uh, new standard is using XHTML, which is more specific. And so you use a self closing tag. Um, and to explain that briefly, if you'll notice here, we have our head tag. And then we have this is what's called an opening head tag, and then here we have a closing head tag, right? And so the server, the browser, everybody that's processing this page knows that this is where the head starts and this is where it ends, right? Well, with a, a link like this, when you don't self close it, you'll notice it looks just like an opening tag, and there's no closing tag. Well, tags like this, um, these link tags and like image tags, if you've ever done, created image tags with HTML before, um, they don't have any closing element to them. They're, they're self-contained. And so with XHTML, what you do is you just self-close it. And you'll notice that this right here looks somewhat similar to this right here. And it's just a self-closing tag and it's more valid. Um, helps make it more specific in the browser different browsers to understand exactly what it is that you're doing okay so you want to always self close any tags like that um, next thing we have is we have our title this is a title that will show up uh, in our browser up in the, in the title section up here All right and then we and then we have our closing head tag and then typically in a header what will happen is you'll go into your body and you'll have your actual header um, that shows up on the page um, you'll have a logo, you might have an RSS feed um, link to, to subscribe to the RSS feed, or you might have a uh, subscribe box for uh, email updates or newsletter, etc. etc. So, inside the headers, where you're going to create all that, and then of course, you'll probably have a, a, a navigation bar or some kind of menu bar. So, just to describe this really quickly, uh, what this tag here is it's called a div tag. And what it does is it basically creates a box on your web page. And inside that box, you can then style it. You can put images, videos, text, all different kinds, whatever your, your actual content is going to be inside that box. And then you can move that box around on your web page, uh, give it different background image, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to help actually create the site. And then we've given it a, an ID, which is essentially a, a name that we can refer to it later in our style sheet which you'll see right here and that allows us to then designate what style we want this specific box to have 